All right, guys, welcome to this tutorial session. Um, it's a very quick tutorial session. I posted this photo earlier on in Instagram, and people were asking me um, how I color graded it. So I decided to put up a short video um, just to explain it. It's a very, I mean, simple um, edit, nothing complicated. I shot this um, on the Canon 5D Mark III, Canon 85mm f1.8 um, natural light um, around. 7 8 a.m. so i had um fairly even lighting conditions so we'll jump into it quickly but then um before then if you haven't watched my video on um, luminosity mask please do so so that you can follow um us all right so i'll go into it this the file that we have here all right so first thing is that i would go to the highlights and then um grade the highlights first and i'm going to be using my color balance as in layer okay so i'll come to my highlights and i want to introduce some blues into my highlights um i think about um anything around 17 is fine into the bit of cyan i think around nine is fine for me for this image i'll leave the magenta or greens the same okay so i'll come to my image i'll come to my layer mask and then come to images apply image my layer i'll choose the layer on which uh, everything has been matched so if you are working on multiple layers you want to match um you want to stamp this whole layer and then work before you start grading that's what i do so layer mask layer one that's what we are selecting from okay so you see your layer mask here so wherever you see darker shades it means that less of the effect has been applied there you are doing with the, the the highlights Alright, so first thing I want to do is to go to uh, my highlights and grade my highlights first. So go to my color balance, go to my highlights, and then I want to introduce a bit of blues, uh, about 17, into my highlights. Introduce cyan, about uh, I think 9 is fine. Leave the magenta and greens there. Then I want to grade it by luminosity mask. Okay. So I want this to affect this highlight. So I'll come and select my layer mask, go to image, apply image, and then make sure that this is inverted. Because if you want to um, grade or you want to deal with the mid-tones or shadows, which are part of shadows, then you would have to invert this. But then we are dealing with highlights, leave it open, leave it unchecked, sorry. Okay, so with my layer, I'll choose my layer mask, which contains every other thing I've done, the skin, blemish removal and all that. So, uh, if you're working on multiple layers, you would want to stamp this whole layer before you start grading your photos. Okay, so you're good here. So, you check your layer mask everywhere that's white or brighter, that's where the effect is. If it's darker, it means less of the effect is being applied there. So, it's wearing a black shirt. We don't want to blow with shadows, so it, it remains black. It's not a gray scale, or it's not a black and white version of the photo. You get it. All right, so we come back. And I go to my mid tones, same color balance, another layer, very different, differently. Deal with the highlights on one layer, deal with shadows, mid tones on separate layers. So I come to my another um, color balance layer, come to my mid tones, and the mid tones I want to introduce a bit of orange in there. So then minus 11 on the yellow, so 10, and just give it 11 for consistency. Okay, then a bit of I think red also, 11 is fine. Then a little bit of magenta, like four. Yeah, four is fine for me. Okay, so there's before and after, before and after. We've introduced a bit of magenta, a bit of orange to it. Orange is yellow and then red. And it goes to affect the skin tones also. Okay, you don't want to leave the skin tones that pale. Well, but if that's what you want, I mean, you know where to same sliders all right so i'll come to my i'll select my layer mask make sure the layer mask selected and not the the adjustment itself so the layer mask and then come to image apply image now we are going to invert because we are dealing with with shadows metals are also part of shadows so we invert it like i said if you haven't watched the video on um color grading by luminosity mask please go and do that all right so there's before and after come to the shadows 
Okay, Shadow Souls, I want to introduce um, a bit of orange into it. So I think we would have a minus 12. A bit of red. And a bit of magenta and magenta of autumn. Seven is fine for me. Okay. Now what happens? Okay, so I could just go and then grade is also to shadows, but I'll just copy the layer mask for the midtones, the same thing onto the shadows. Now what happens is that the effect is looking quite when you whenever you color grade or you introduce an adjustment layer. Um, to color grade, it affects the contrast a bit. So sometimes make the photo so heavy, like you see colors, I mean bleeding into colors and all that. So if you don't want to affect contrast, you come to the um, the blend uh, modes, and then you choose color. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll do this for all of them. Come to the midtones, choose color. Put my highlights, choose color. In that way, the contrast of the image wouldn't be affected or the contrast of the tones wouldn't be affected but it would just affect the color so it leaves your photo that clean and not too heavy or too contrasting all right so because we introduced um orange into the shadows the blacks are also uh, the blacks are also going to be covered with a little bit of that orange so when you check the shirt and the trouser he's wearing here this before and after you realize that there's a bit of orange on it so we want to remove that from the blacks and the hair and all that, the glasses. You see that um, there's a bit of see, there's a bit of orange in the hair. So we'll come to our selective color adjustment layer. Come to our blacks. Then you know yellow is the opposite of blue, cyan is the opposite of red, and orange is made of yellow and then um, red. So introduce cyan and blue to counter the orange as in the as in the blacks. So we want to come to the yellows and then introduce a bit of blues into um, into it. Make ten is fine. Want to come to the magentas. Okay, first let's come to the cyan. A bit of cyan in there. Four, four, five. That's fine. A little bit of magenta also. Four. Okay. So there's it. So what, what I'll do now is I want to boost the blacks a bit. This slider here is for contrast. If you want to increase the contrast in the blacks, you want to blacken it more. You would have to lift it up. If I bring this all the way down, it's flattening the blacks and remove, trying to remove the blacks from it. Send it all the way up. You can see that the blacks are so distant. You don't want this. Hardly would you, I mean, uh, deal with stuff like this or have to move the slider. Don't really do this if you're dealing with portraits um, or beauty retouches. Okay, so I'll bring in just about two with the blacks. So there's before and after. So I'll copy the same layer mask from the shadows onto it by holding down Alt and dragging onto it. All right, so there's before, after, before, after. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing I want to do is that um, I want to increase the vibrance a bit. Um, vibrance saturation difference, difference, difference. All right. So vibrance actually affects more of the the uh, colder tones, and then the saturation affects the warmer tones. Okay. So I want to increase the vibrance a bit to about five, just to give it that extra bluish crisp in the highlights. All right. Then the next thing I'll do is that here's what I do. Um, There's a something I've actually discovered um, for uh, my vintage grading. You get it, a bit of vintage cinematic grading. I use this a lot. So I'll, I'll come to the uh, adjustment layer, then choose solid color. All right, that's good. I'll come into my blues this way. For the same image, I'll come to my blues a bit. All right, and then drag from here to the side to select the blues. Blues on the side. I want to select a very dark blue. Okay, and hit OK. 
Then now I'll change the blend mode. This is the most important part. From normal to exclusion. Watch what happens. So this before, after, before, after. I'll come in there again. Refine my colors a bit. So for consistency sake, let me just put in the, the color I used in the original. That's um, 00, um, 0027. All right, so that's very low here. Okay, we're good to go. Now I come and copy the layer mask from the shadows onto it because I want it to affect the shadows. Okay, now I double this effect. Come to image, apply image, invert again. So you compare the layer mask of this to that of the shadows. You realize that this is much darker because it is confining it more to the shadows so check the highlights here check the highlights here and then you see this is dark that means that a little bit of the effect is applying to the highlights in the shadows but then when it comes to this layer i mean it's completely blacked out okay all right so there you go and then you want to lower the opacity to about um 35 36 yeah so this is before this is before this after before and after all right so the last thing i want to do um, is to add my um, levels adjustment boost the highlights a bit and then the shadows also more three and then we are good to go so that's how i color graded um, the photo that's before and after before and after all right so I stamp this goal here. And um oh now this is a this is a bonus um tip, okay. Usually I like to crop to four is to five aspect ratio because um I realize that most people just use their photos for this, either Instagram or Facebook or whatever, or WhatsApp. And when I've realized when you when you post um four is to five aspect ratio file on your WhatsApp status, it doesn't really pixelate as compared to the original three. 3 is to 2 is to 3 aspect ratio so I um, I like giving my files to clients in 4 is to 5 unless otherwise stated or I know that there's for a particular project okay. but otherwise I give them in 4 is to 5 so when I get to this stage I come to my history here then with this little button here I click it and it opens a file in another document where I go and do my cropping so that I preserve the original file size or the original document. So I come here and I crop. But this file is already cropped before I moved it to Photoshop. So crop to 4 is 5 as per ratio. Then OK. Then I sharpen. Filter. OK, so before I sharpen, I reduce the image size. Control Alt I. And then make sure that my longest length in this case which is the height is 2048 pixels this is the highest you can get um online because of for work if if for work if you are um if, if you are choosing anything higher than this instagram or facebook would auto compress it and you don't want that to happen to your photo so i chose this 2048 and then okay hit okay then from there go to my filter my sharpen and sharp mask amount anything around 50 or 45 radius one is okay for me all right so that's my file okay all right so quickly that's that's how i color grade my my photo or this photo so to save i'll go to file export save for work Right, quality anything around 87 is okay. If you go higher, the file size will just increase, but the, the image size is, is still the same. Now, people suggest that you, re you reduce your image size here. I, I don't advise that because um, if you're going to sharpen before you reduce the image size, it's going to compromise or reduce the integrity of the, the, the sharpening. So, you want you don't want to do that, you, don't, you want to crop, reduce image size, then you sharpen, you just come and export here quality by cubic and um that works for me
So this is how I did this before, before and after, before and after. If you have any questions, you can DM me or leave a comment below. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you very much.